This motion control camera rig is almost entirely 3D printed. It's super easy to assemble and control. Let me unveil what it can do. Come meet you, man. You can turn yourself in. I'm not going to turn myself in. I need help. I need money. You might be crazy, but that train sounds like an elevator. Hey, Moose doesn't have an elevated train. How do you know it's an elevated train? You know, I think he's right. I live better now. When I came home, there was a 3D printed CNC motion control camera in my house. He had a mechanical arm. The color were his eyes. The color was his hands. You find this tank. You find this man. I'll call it. I'll call it. Stick around. I'll show you what it can do and how easy it is to make one. Welcome. Your fugitive's name is Dr. Richard Kimball. Go get him. I started this DIY channel to record all the projects and ideas I waste my time on, including that ridiculous intro and this ridiculous motion control camera system I designed. It was self-evident that if I was going to break into the YouTube league of This Old Tony, AVE, or more recently, Stuff Made Here, I was going to need some unique projects, camera angles, and matching montages to keep your attention. My idea was to build a camera rigging system where I can program the pan, tilt, elevation, the rotation, and the speed and timing of those movements. The routines and movements are programmed with basic G-code commands. This machine doesn't know how cool it is or even what it is. It just knows that it has six degrees of movement it can operate. All of the rotational axes have electrical slip rings installed. It's a small component that allows electrical connections around a rotational device without binding the wires. All of the rotational axis can spin indefinitely. There's plenty of software and hardware options that already do these exact things and admittedly, probably better, but they're expensive and they're proprietary. My solution was to use a basic Arduino and Raspberry Pi combination. The Arduino controls the motors like any other 3D printer, milling machine, or robot, and the Raspberry Pi is the middleman between you and where you want the camera to go. It's also Wi-Fi capable, so the entire rig is wireless. The magician passes the hoop around the girl once to prove that there are no wires. I've actually included a battery compartment in the back, so you don't even need to run power to it. This rig also powers the camera, so I never have to worry about changing the batteries. The software I run on my Raspberry Pi is Universal G-Code Sender. It's lightweight, yet robust, and it has a few neat features built right in. One of those features is called Pendant. It's just a simple web interface, but it allows you to use any phone, computer, or tablet as a remote controller. One thing it won't do is automatically open up After Effects and use the wire removal tool. G-Code is used to control nearly every 3D printer, laser cutter, and industrial CNC machine around the world. It's versatile and easy to use, especially with this machine, as you only need to know a few G-Code commands to operate at full potential. I never had a set idea or game plan other than these two major points. I was going to make a machine with the intention of 3D printing as many parts as possible. And the other qualifier was it had to use basic Jelly Bean electronics and software that's open source and free for everyone to use or modify. This tool will help me achieve those unique camera shots and it seemed like the perfect opportunity to expand my Fusion 360 design skills while milking this channel for self-gratitude and subscriptions. I spent a lot of time on this project, but there's always room for improvement. So I invite you to collaborate and innovate. All the project files are listed in the description below. So I'm going to split this video into two parts actually. I'm going to do a part on the assembly and a part on the electronics. But uh, I'll go ahead and put the G-code information in the description below just so you have it. It's only a couple of codes to get all the access moving and everything working. But uh, I do want to split it up because the assembly, there's a bunch of moving parts. 
and again it's not difficult there's just a lot to it and then the electronic side again also not difficult just uh, a bunch of steps so I figured it'd be easier with uh, a few videos that way you kind of follow along in succession I'm guessing I have to remind you to subscribe so you get notified when those other two videos show up but uh, there's a few more awesome features I wanted to uh, show you guys and I think it makes this project super unique there are two cliche statements that define this project necessity is the mother of all inventions and she's also the mother of all fuck-ups when you make the assumption that your last design was final I've definitely gone through many design changes and improvements. Son of a bitch, man. There's always something. There's always something. Not having a thought out plan going into this project has its pros and cons. One aspect is a full table of bad ideas and failed prints. But on the other hand, each one of those failures was a lesson learned and a spark for future improvements. One of those sparks ended up smoldering into an idea, which is actually probably one of the coolest things in this whole machine. Once the system is powered up, the motors stay locked in their position until you tell them to move by a user input or running a program you've already set up. But I'd figured, I'd take it a step further. I installed a set of buttons near the camera which allow me to disable individual motors or all of them depending on how you want to set it up. I think this is probably the coolest feature because you don't even need to use the automated aspect of this robot. You can literally just aim the camera where you want it and let go of the button. It'll hold that position indefinitely or until you power off the machine. You don't even have to turn it on. You can use it for all kinds of slider moves and just an extra steady hand. It's like a tripod, camera jib, and slider all wrapped into one. Oh, did I mention it's also uh, CNC controlled? With the extendable arms, the camera can go from ground level to 8 feet high on my current tripod setup, which is actually the lowest setting, so make that 11 feet if you extend the tripod. The built-in counterweight lets you balance out any camera or accessory you have mounted to the front. This direct G-code control method is not difficult to understand, but in this case, it's a manual process. There's no fancy software to program keyframes and speeds. If you want to program a routine, you have to specify which axis you want to move and the position you want it to move to. If you guys have any other control ideas or software that's open source, aka free, be sure to leave a comment below. I'd love to have a drag and frame type of GUI interface without the price tag.